Good morning. So about 45 seconds ago, I was asked to pray that there be no rain this morning. And after 30 years in this role, I've learned that the chaplain is always held responsible for the weather. So if the weather holds, I will take full responsibility, sir. If it doesn't, I've never gotten to do an invocation baptism doubleheader before. And if you matriculate with poison water, you might as well graduate with holy water. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for a country committed to the reality that all of us are created equal and that you, our creator, endowed in us the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We are a nation in progress. We continue to grow in our national sanctification, and we ask that we continue to grow even this day. Shed your grace anew on us. These graduates are guardians of our republic. They have spent a year studying to meet the challenges of a complex world, and that world has become more complex. And at the end of this hour, they leave to go meet its challenges, not as students, but as stewards. Wherever they go, in this nation or another, strengthen them with moral courage and mental wisdom to lead nobly. Remind them that we never take oaths to pursue easy things, but only for the hard things. Be with them in their hard moments, and may they remember you in all their callings. In this hour, though, may we celebrate the achievement of this tremendous professional milestone. Make this hour a blessed memory that inspires and unifies these graduates for years to come. May your blessings also be upon their families for all the support they faithfully provided to make this moment a reality. All this I ask in your mighty and merciful name. Amen. Please be seated. We will now present awards for faculty excellence in four categories. Please hold your applause until all awards have been announced. Presenting the awards are the Dean, Dr. Richard Lackiment, and the Provost, Dr. James Breckenridge, along with the 51st Commandant of the Army War College, Major General John Kim, and our guest speaker, General Paul Nakasone. Five members of the faculty are receiving the Excellence in Teaching Award for the core courses of the resident program. They were selected by their peers for this award in recognition of exemplary performance as a teacher and faculty mentor. Hey. <laughs> Dr. G.K. Cunningham in the Department of Military Strategy, Planning, and Operations. Dr. Thomas Galvin in the Department of Command, Leadership, and Management. In absentia, Dr. Ronald Granary in the Department of National Security and Strategy. In absentia, Dr. Christopher Priggy in the Basic Strategic Art Program within the Department of Military Strategy, Planning and Operations. And in absentia, Dr. Patrick Bratton in the Department of National Security and Strategy. Four faculty members are receiving the award for excellence in public scholarship, written, audio, or video. They were selected by their peers for this award in recognition of their robust public scholarship and engagement, which enhances the profile of the Army War College and its faculty experts. Dr. Allison Abbey in the Department of Command, Leadership, and Management. In absentia, Dr. Tammy Biddle in the Department of National Security and Strategy. In absentia, Dr. Christopher Bolin in the Strategic Studies Institute and in absentia, Dr. Kevin Weddle in the Department of Distance Education. 
Eight faculty members are receiving the Excellence in Service Award. One name will be read later. They were selected by their peers for this award in recognition of their significant internal and external contributions that benefited the Army War College, the Army, and the Department of Defense. Dr. Gregory Cantwell in the Center for Strategic Leadership. Colonel Mickey Evans in the Department of Military Strategy, Planning, and Operations. Colonel Colin Hunton in the Department of Command, Leadership, and Management. Colonel Eric Kotuch in the Department of National Security and Strategy. Major Derek Martin in the Center for Strategic Leadership. Colonel Craig Morrow in the Department of Distance Education. And Colonel James Powell in the Department of National Security and Strategy. Finally, seven faculty members are receiving the Excellence in Innovation Award. As a seminar teaching team, they developed and applied active learning methods to improve their students' communication skills and strategic judgment. Colonel Ken Gillum in the Center for Strategic Leadership. In absentia, Dr. Joel Hillison in the Department of Distance Education. In absentia, Professor Robert Hume in the Department of Distance Education. In absentia, Dr. Brandy Jenner, formerly of the Department of Educational Methodology. Colonel Jonathan Shine in the Department of National Security and Strategy is receiving both the Excellence in Innovation and the Excellence in Service Awards. In absentia, Colonel Casey Stevens in the Department of Command, Leadership and Management, and Professor Brett Weigel in the Department of Military Strategy, Planning and Operations. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for our faculty award winners. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 51st Commandant of the United States Army War College, Major General John Kim. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, what an important day here at Carlisle Barracks at this historic Army post, uh, been the center of uh, education, leadership from going, literally going back to the 1750s. And a special call out welcome to the friends and families that made it here. I see you all back far away. Not normally this far away in a normal ceremony, but it's great to see you here. And to General Nakasone, uh, thank you so much for joining us here in Carlisle. Class of 2020, I had the distinct privilege of being your commandant this year. And well done to all of you. According to the provost, the dean, and the faculty, you've been thoroughly tested and found completely worthy of the moniker of graduate of the United States Army War College. Everybody here is so very proud of all of you. We're very excited about what's next. Literally 75 years ago this very day was the one day weather hold for the D-Day invasion. General Eisenhower made the decision uh, on the 4th to move it from the 5th to the 6th. And in fact, six hours from now, it was actually about 2030 English time and Greenwich Mean Time, in about six hours was the exact time when Eisenhower was meeting with the soldiers of the 101st that were about to board their aircraft. Uh, the, postpone, the postponement decision was risky. Any delay made it very difficult to keep the operation a secret. If the weather did not improve, uh, D-Day would have to be delayed until the tides were again in their favor about two weeks later. So this morning we thought about the same thing. Could we postpone two more weeks? Could we give you another paper to write? Uh, could we use the director of the NSA standing behind me to shut down your phones and all networks for a few weeks and hold everything at bay so no... Oh. So, yes, exactly. So no one would know you were graduating. And we decided that the modified peacetime landing craft called moving vans and packed cars were too visible. We could not hide the fact that you were ready to graduate. And you have important places to go and important missions to get to. So we'll get on with the ceremony. Uh, General Nakasone, I've known you for many years. Over your tremendous career of leadership, like all of us, you started at the company level and now at the very senior levels of our government. In front of us today, I would tell you, walk across, uh, walking across the sidewalk in front of us, are graduates who are ready and able to go do the next thing. They've accomplished amazing things this past year, 
and are ready to go lead the area of national security and international efforts. Graduates who are assuming the mantle of leadership, not just in our nation, but for all the international officers in the militaries and nations around the world. And I would tell you that we, the staff and faculty, have been blessed to be part of your enrichment and your growth this past year, so congratulations. Now let me introduce our guest speaker. He graduated from St. John's University, was commissioned in, through ROTC in 1986, then Second Lieutenant Nakasone, embarked upon a career leading to uh, very senior levels of our government today. Started out as a military intelligence officer and has really been uh, in the forefront of cyber warfare domain for throughout his career. In his current capacity, he wears three hats. Commanding General of the U.S. Cyber Command, Director of the National Security Agency, and Chief of the Central Security Service. More importantly, he also is a graduate of this institution, and 13 years ago, he sat where you are, not socially distanced, way too close together, uh, and, but would graduate from this institution. Ladies and gen gentlemen, please join me in a warm welcome for General Nakasone. So class of 2020, good morning. Thank you so much for your welcome. Uh, John, Dr. Lackerman, Prevost, thank you so much. Kimo, it's good to see you again outside of Afghanistan. Uh, it is a wonderful day to be back at my alma mater. It's nice to see all of you. It's nice to see anyone actually these days. Like so many graduates right now from high school to college and beyond, you find yourselves walking out into a world changed. But graduates of the Army War College are used to change, used to looking ahead and understanding that the environment may shift, but the spirit of our mission does not. From its earliest days, the Army War College filled a key missing piece in Army education. Its founders saw that we need more from our leaders than responsibility or even action. We need vision. We need strategy. In the 1930s, the students who passed through these doors helped build the foundation of the strategy in World War II, understanding that war would take place on many fronts and challenge us technologically and tactically. In 2007, the graduates of this college were the brigade commanders and leaders of the surge in Iraq, while many in the class of 2020 were our company commanders who ensured our success on the battlefield. A new challenge awaits you for, the, for beyond these walls. Most of you will have come up in an era where we have focused mostly on counterterrorism, and now great power competition, evolving technology, and yes, COVID-19, and our need to appreciate that the security environment is more than friend against foes. These will be the challenges of the second decade of the 21st century. This morning, please indulge me as I share my thoughts on the atmosphere you're going to enter today as senior leaders, a bit about talent, and strategic leadership on a personal level. I offer my thoughts to you, soon to be fellow graduates of this great institution, knowing fully well one of you may one day be offering the commencement speech of 2033. Before I touch on my thoughts on strategic leadership, let me recognize the class of 2020. I can safely say after reviewing your accomplishments and looking at your statistics that this year's class is almost, almost as accomplished as the class of 2007, my graduating year. You come from all walks of life, all branches of our military services, a cadre of deeply experienced DOD civilians, and 79 international fellows. For our international partners, 75 countries are represented here, with Angola, Azerbaijan, and Liberia as new countries, now part of the War College and the social fabric of Carlisle, Pennsylvania. I hope that each of you, our partners, takes not only the strategic insights offered from this college, but the lifetime experiences that a place like the War College offers so uniquely. I understand the year you experienced was unique, but I also know that as time passes, you will think less about social distancing and more about the social experience of your seminar, the lifelong colleagues and friends you've made, and perhaps, somewhat begrudgingly, that Clausewitz and his teachings may well apply to conflict in the 21st century. As you re-enter your service, whether military or civilian, 
you will find a ready market for strategic leadership. So what does it mean to be a strategic leader today? As a leader, you've come to understand responsibility and accountability. But a strategic leader sees beyond those ideas. After you leave today, expectations of you will change. As an Army and Joint Senior Leader, let me assure my U.S. colleagues, we are expecting a lot of you. You will need to be proactive. You'll be expected to take more initiative, not wait for problems to present themselves and instructions to act. You will need to be clear. Nothing happens if you cannot effectively communicate your intent, your strategy, your vision. You will need to be cooperative. You'll be operating in areas in which others have equities. There's a premium on building consensus and coalitions around your decisions. And to do this artfully, with greater finesse, and less force. And finally, you will need to be focused on outcomes. Process is meaningless if it doesn't lead to outcomes. Focus on what you want to get done. Really focus. And when you're done, ask yourself, so what? Did it matter? Was it worth your time? Not always easy questions to answer. Ask them anyway. Foundational, foundational to your future success rests on the talent you will inherit, you will develop, you will lead in the coming years. You're probably closer to the end of career, the, your career than the beginning. This is not a bad thing. It means you have perspective and authority to use that perspective to solve hard problems. You have a responsibility to lift the next generation. You have a responsibility to create a positive culture. Your impact on the next generation of talent will be everything. As a leader in the technology arena, I've come to understand the struggle to recruit, train, and retain true talent. In my 34 years in the Army, I've never seen an infantryman, a pilot, a submariner, or for that matter, any military profession who can operate at 100 times the skill level of their closest peer. But I see it in cyber all the time. Having the right type of cyber technical talent in your organization is a major lift that requires constant attention, effort, and oversight by leaders. For example, a top 2% software engineer is worth 100 beginner to intermediate code makers. I've experienced examples of where, during critical missions, our best software engineers were able to fully comprehend the actual problem and build software solutions and infrastructures that directly enabled mission accomplishment in ways our operators did not conceive when they were drawing up our operational plans. The bottom line. You are a senior leader. You, as a senior leader, need to know where your top talent lies and how to build it. The other component of talent, you won't get all of it. This is where we look for partnerships. It's not about drawing lines between the talent that works directly for you and the talent elsewhere. It's about building connections, finding common purpose and intent. From high school through undergraduate to doctoral and professional programs, students and faculty now study and contribute to the most critical national security challenges our nation faces. In fact, in February, I stopped by Stanford University and met 12 exceptional undergraduates writing honors thesis about international security. Topics like the role of non-state proxies in cyberspace, how the all-volunteer force affects our perceptions of the costs of wars, and the effectiveness of foreign influence campaigns on international nuclear agreements. I also met with a more senior group of researchers as part of Stanford's Internet Observatory they had done some extremely thorough research on foreign influence operations, all unclassified, all open source. This is not just happening at Stanford. My team works with researchers from Clemson, Harvard, other institutions all around the United States and the world. These universities now devote a lot of manpower to these topics. This is not transactional. Academics would be the first to tell you, you don't get rich being a professor. They devote their time to these issues because they want their knowledge and research to benefit public policy. These resources and relationships can help you achieve your mission. Reach out. That instinct to build connections and share a common cause, to see talent in all corners of our work, also takes us a little further afield. We don't succeed alone. You need partners. The scope of your responsibilities and the outcomes you'll be expected to generate will grow beyond the resource under your direct control. This is true at the individual level, but you can also see it at the national level and in our national defense strategy. 
Readers of the NDS tend to focus on lethality as the objective of the document. It is not. The goal is to expand the competitive space with our adversaries, and lethality is only one way to do that. The NDS highlights partnerships as a critical way to expand the competitive space because, and I hate to break this to you, the United States military does not have the monopoly on the best ideas, the best talent, or the best capabilities. Partnerships need to be grounded in something more than just a formal contract. They need a mix of shared interests and shared values. They're also nurtured by personal connections. I see these shared values, especially at the core of international partnerships. Countries from around the world want to work with the U.S. military. Yes, because they see shared interests, but more fundamentally because they believe in and see the benefits of the international system that reflects our values. Take note that this is not how our competitors seek to build what they might call partnerships. To make just one example, offering new technology or infrastructure development on an aggressive loan schedule to a less developed country and then using that debt as geopolitical leverage, that's intimidation, not partnership. One of the reasons partnerships are so critical is because so much of the central currency of power has shifted from large-scale weapon systems to talent. And I would tell you, future graduates, that strategic communications is your calling card. Precision and clarity are key. Own the vision, own the mission. To write clearly, you must write well. And to write well, you must read often. Read everything you can. Fiction, nonfiction, science, history, current events. Reading sharpens your mind and your understanding of the world. More is more, until it comes to email. With email, more is definitely less. I get more email than all of you combined. Keep it short and to the point. Never send senior leaders an email with six attachments. I offer one example to make this point. The Gettysburg Address, the finest speech in our nation's history, is 272 words long. Fits perfectly on your computer screen at 26 point font. Certainly, if President Lincoln could capture the essence of America's greatest historic challenge in these few words, you can communicate in today's world in an email that's less than half a page. Ah, email leads its way to PowerPoint. When it comes to PowerPoint, point the urge to cram every detail onto a slide. Focus on what's important and use pictures over text where you can. Focus on what's important and use, and use your best judgment. The best communicators are storytellers who take you on a journey and know extremely well the information they want to convey. They use slides to enhance their presentation, not as their presentation. From a personal perspective, let me share with you my experiences on strategic leadership. I graduated from this college, as the commandant said, on a similar day in June of 2007. As I listened to the graduate speaker, and I will admit I don't remember his name today, I mentally faded out for a moment. I saw myself packing my car, heading off on vacation, taking command, maybe 30 seconds of letting my mind wander. I didn't know it at the time, but 13 years later, I can say that was my last 30 seconds of mindless thought. Whatever waits you on the other side of this will be all-consuming. Mark my words. You will always be on. The information flow is relentless. Hone your focus. The distractions will increase. Time management is everything. It isn't about time. It's the timing. In a recent Harvard Business Review report called How CEOs Manage Time, a 12-year study of 27 CEOs, they found that CEOs spend about 40% of their time on the core agenda, about 36% of their time on unfolding developments, and 24% of the time on have-to-do routine. Successful CEOs harness their time and focus their strategy, but they also understand the importance of family, sleep, nutrition, exercise. I've also found this to be true. Do the work that belongs to you, not to your subordinates. You have to train for your role. Part of that means creating space for solitude. Productive solitude leads to clarity, creati creativity, emotional balance, and moral cour courage. Your minds may already be elsewhere. Packing your car, heading off on vacation, getting ready to take command. That's good. You're ready. 
So I'd like to ask one last thing of the class of 2020. I'd like to ask for your attention for just 10 more seconds. And that, ladies and gentlemen of the class of 2020, is the last 10 seconds of peace you'll have for the rest of your military career. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed it. I wish you luck and good health. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, class of 2020 diplomas are conferred under the authority of the United States Congress. In recognition of their accomplishments, the graduates will receive the Diploma of the United States Army War College and, if earned, the degree of Master of Strategic Studies. Additionally, the Army War College Student Awards Program recognizes outstanding student research and writing on issues of importance to national security. Winners will receive their award with their diploma and degree. The awards presented today are sponsored by the U.S. Army War College, by the Army War College Foundation, and by external organizations that encourage excellence in military scholarship. Honoring our graduates today are Dr. Lacument, Dr. Breckenridge, Major General Kim, and General Nakasone. Please hold your applause until all diplomas and awards have been presented. Students, an announcement to all, there is hand sanitizer located at the end of the walkway after you have your photos taken. Seminar one, Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Burrow McGonagall. Graduating in absentia, Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Anton Banweg. Lieutenant Colonel Jade Eric Beeler. Lieutenant Colonel Roderick Kyle Butts. Lieutenant Colonel Butts received first place in the National Security Essay Competition sponsored by the Secretary of Defense. He also received the Commandant's Award for Distinction in Research. His project advisor was Dr. Jacqueline Witt. Lieutenant Colonel Timothy Hudson. Lieutenant Colonel Brian Anthony Jacobs. Chaplain, Lieutenant Colonel Renee Reynolds Keel. Graduating in absentia, Colonel Jackson Allen Kurtzman. Mr. Andres Paz. Lieutenant Colonel James H. B. P. IV. Lieutenant Colonel Robert Emmett Petty V. Lieutenant Colonel Petty received the War College Foundation's Award for Outstanding Strategy Research Project. His project advisor was Dr. Thomas Galvin. Colonel Hector Roman. Colonel Wade Rutland. Graduating in absentia, Lieutenant Colonel Emmanuel Sitole. Lieutenant Colonel Hui Xuan Tang. Seminar two, Colonel David Noble. Brigadier General Ahmed Abu Bakar. Commander Monif Al Monif. Graduating in absentia, Lieutenant Colonel James A. Barber. Chaplain Colonel Shmuel L. Felsenberg.
Lieutenant Colonel Mark Flitton. Graduating in absentia, Lieutenant Colonel Francisco Harris. Lieutenant Colonel George Kinter. Colonel Pascal Kitiro. Colonel Donnie Nolan. Lieutenant Colonel Mark E. Pellini. Colonel Valentin Scroza. Colonel Sean Underwood. To honor Colonel Underwood's leadership as the student class president, the Army War College Foundation presents him with a lifetime alumni membership. Lieutenant Colonel Gabriel Vargas. Seminar three, Colonel James Ross Yastremski. Lieutenant Colonel Christopher W. Cooksey. Colonel Amanda Evans. Colonel Martin Flynn. Colonel Anthony Duval Gray. Mr. Todd M. Heiser. Colonel Charles Hewitt. Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Jamat. Lieutenant Colonel William Millet III. Graduating in absentia, Lieutenant Colonel Andrews Polucius. Lieutenant Colonel Jason Rosenstroh. Lieutenant Colonel Aaron J. Sadusky. Colonel Gabriela Banos Tedla. Graduating in absentia, Lieutenant Colonel Michael Robleski. Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Ziegler. Seminar four, Colonel Darrell S. Von Hegel. Colonel Philip B. Brown, Jr. Colonel Raymond J. Broomberger. Lieutenant Colonel Scott T. Childers. Lieutenant Colonel Shermon L. Dayon.
Mr. Stephen T. Frum. Lieutenant Colonel Richard J. Geruso. Lieutenant Colonel Brian P. Hallberg. Lieutenant Colonel Daniel W. Harris. Lieutenant Colonel Michael G. Hayes. Graduating in absentia, Colonel Philip J. Keneary III. Lieutenant Colonel Jennifer R. Martin. Lieutenant Colonel Mike Murisep. Colonel Chibu Ize Ogbu Abu. Graduating in absentia, Colonel Brett T. Wolcock. Seminar 5, Colonel Daryl Gwyneth Devera Waden. Colonel Mansur Khalid Almuteri. Mr. Bradley D. Arsenault. Graduating in absentia, Lieutenant Colonel Brent R. Bach. Graduating in absentia, Colonel Benjamin A. Bennett. Colonel Kathleen S. Cage. Lieutenant Colonel Kevin J. Conant. Lieutenant Colonel Peter Helzer. Lieutenant Colonel Quentin Cambridge Coolman. Lieutenant Colonel Jeff J. Lackner. Lieutenant Colonel Paul A. Lucci, Jr. Colonel Robert L. Manley, III. Colonel Robert Brennan Roshan. Lieutenant Colonel Barat Shala. Lieutenant Colonel Tron Kwok Tuan. Seminar six, Colonel James Ryan Embry. Colonel William Thomas Adams. Lieutenant Colonel O'Kara Onwabwile. Colonel Garrick Kramer. Colonel Scott Joseph Emmel. Lieutenant Colonel Brian Evans. Graduating in absentia, Lieutenant Colonel Michael Patrick Flaherty. 
Lieutenant Colonel Ernest Govea. Graduating in absentia, Mr. Patrick Lee McKenzie. Colonel Agre Maguaza. Lieutenant Colonel Terrence McDonald. Lieutenant Colonel Jacob Winston Miller. Colonel Brian Schrank. Lieutenant Colonel Attila Terriani. Lieutenant Colonel Christine Udvardi. Seminar 7, Colonel Russell C. Stewart. Colonel Roland Bartakovich. Lieutenant Colonel Alexia N. Fields. Graduating in absentia, Colonel Garth Gould. Colonel Gould received the War College Foundation's Award for Outstanding Strategy Research Project. His project advisor was Colonel Douglas Bennett. Graduating in absentia, Colonel Ratasha L. Jackson. Chaplain Colonel David L. Johnson. Colonel Francesco Maoriello. Graduating in absentia, Lieutenant Colonel Patrick Manson. Lieutenant Colonel David G. Olson. Lieutenant Colonel Kirsten R. Schwen. Lieutenant Colonel Sama T. Susu. Lieutenant Colonel William J. Talbert. Graduating in absentia, Lieutenant Colonel Eric A. Trammell. Lieutenant Colonel David A. Utlaut. Colonel Walter D. Zackrell. Colonel Zackrell received the Military Officers Association of America Writing Award. His project advisor is Dr. Patrick Bratton. Seminar eight, Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Franklin Gooding. Lieutenant Colonel Velibor Bachrock. Mr. Raymond E. Best. Lieutenant Colonel Matthew C. Danner. Colonel Mark A. Denton. Graduating in absentia, Lieutenant Colonel Paul G. Harrell. Lieutenant Colonel Eric Jacobson. Graduating in absentia, Lieutenant Colonel Martin Leepak. 
Colonel Michael Ludwig. Colonel Jeffrey Allen McCartney. Lieutenant Colonel Kerry J. Metz. Lieutenant Colonel Jared P. Novak. Lieutenant Colonel Yerbo Tolak. Graduating in absentia, Lieutenant Colonel Lance Van. Lieutenant Colonel F.E.A. Wilson in Goma. Seminar 9, Lieutenant Colonel Michael A. Busby. Lieutenant Colonel Lewis D. Duncan. Ms. Allison E. Goldsmith. Lieutenant Colonel Jennifer S. Krim. Graduating in absentia, Colonel Christopher Kennebec. Colonel John P. Kunstbeck. Lieutenant Colonel Samuel L. Lashley. Colonel Duane M. Patton. Colonel Alfredo Facundo Pozo. Lieutenant Colonel Fernando Prada. Lieutenant Colonel Barry Simons. Colonel Charles D. Smith. Lieutenant Colonel Zacharias A. Soma. Commander Blandino Alvin Villanueva. Colonel John T. Wellahan, Jr. Seminar 10, Lieutenant Colonel Margaret Lauren McGonagall. Lieutenant Colonel Rory Aldridge. Colonel Michael Anders. Mr. Walton Chung. Graduating in absentia, Lieutenant Colonel Joshua Dalton. Lieutenant Colonel Vincente Garcia. Colonel Charles Terrence Hills. Colonel Matthew J. Lennox. Colonel Jiri Liebal.
Colonel Richard Adam Malaga. Lieutenant Colonel Colin E. McClaskey. Lieutenant Colonel McClaskey received the Colonel Don and Mrs. Ann Busey Military Intelligence Writing Award. His project advisor was Colonel Douglas Winton. Colonel Sean McGarry. Lieutenant Colonel Yonatan Mofaz. Colonel Peter Moon. Graduating in absentia, Colonel Clifton Gadimeng. Seminar 11, Colonel Kevin M. Pulaski. Lieutenant Colonel Joseph A. Atkinson. Colonel James L. Booth. Colonel Jason T. Cook. Lieutenant Colonel Richard J. D'Angelo. Colonel Marco Eggert. Brigadier General Ahmed Musa Mansur El Ghanem. Lieutenant Colonel Michael D. Hagerty, Jr. Chaplain, Lieutenant Colonel William B. Hanna. Mrs. Tony L. Hansen. Commander Jason P. Harper. Lieutenant Colonel Jamie L. Jones. Lieutenant Colonel Jerome A. Parker. Colonel Julio C. Toledo. Colonel Gabriel D. Wells. Seminar 12, graduating in absentia, Colonel Kurt Roland, Jr. Graduating in absentia, Colonel Jamal Al-Katiri. Colonel Paul Enrico Alicia. Colonel Thad James Collard. Lieutenant Colonel Adil Fichtali. Graduating in absentia, Lieutenant Colonel Dennis Lloyd Hager II. Colonel Mark R. Himes. Lieutenant Colonel Wilbur W. Sue. Lieutenant Colonel Celicia M. Mitchell.
Lieutenant Colonel David W. Morgan. Colonel Prem Bahadur Poon. Lieutenant Colonel Donald C. Santillo. Colonel Akakazu Shibasaki. Lieutenant Colonel Cody Strong. Mr. David Francis Tervanen. Lieutenant Colonel Daniel E. Welsh. Seminar 13, Colonel Mandy L. Bohr. Lieutenant Colonel Victor Cruz Navarro. Lieutenant Colonel David C. Eckley. Lieutenant Colonel Andrew L. Heyman. Colonel Zarab Kivichia. Lieutenant Colonel Matthew L. Coons. Graduating in absentia, Commander Patrick E. Lancaster, Jr. Lieutenant Colonel Reed A. Larson. Lieutenant Colonel Larson received the War College Foundation's Major General Harold J. Green Memorial Writing Award. His project advisor was Dr. Frank Jones. Lieutenant Colonel Roland T. Murphy. Colonel John M. Poole. Lieutenant Colonel Matthew L. Rowland. Lieutenant Colonel Brian K. Salisbury. Lieutenant Colonel Ryan L. Schrock. Colonel John A. Ursiali. Ms. Tanya L. Willis. Seminar 14, Colonel Ryan Wiley. Lieutenant Colonel Suleiman David Abache. Lieutenant Colonel Abache received the War College Foundation's Daniel M. Lewin Cyber Terrorism Technology Writing Award. His project advisors were Colonel Eric Kotuch and Professor Howard Taylor. Lieutenant Colonel James Atchley, Jr. Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Burney, Jr. Lieutenant Colonel Clinton Cody. Colonel Takuya Furukawa.
Lieutenant Colonel Christopher J. Heathscott. Mr. Bryce H. Johnson. Lieutenant Colonel Cullen Jones. Commander James McCormick. Lieutenant Colonel David A. Mitchell. Lieutenant Colonel David Edward Short. Colonel Michael Stewart. Colonel Hassan Timo. Lieutenant Colonel Angela Wallace. Seminar 15, Colonel Karen Denise Renna Fricke. Colonel John M. Berry, Jr. Lieutenant Colonel Jeremy Brockmeyer. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Colonel Darren W. Buss. Lieutenant Colonel Pedro A. Camacho III. Lieutenant Colonel Thomas P. Donatel. Colonel Mache Klish. Lieutenant Colonel Damien Magno. Lieutenant Colonel Mayo received the War College Foundation's Daniel M. Lewin Cyber Terrorism Technology Writing Award. His project advisors were Colonel Eric Kotuch and Professor Howard Taylor. Colonel Robert S. Perry, Jr. Colonel Jorge Luis Ramos Agama. Lieutenant Colonel Rachel E. Sorrells. Lieutenant Colonel Sorrells received the War College Foundation's Colonel Jerry D. Cashin Memorial Writing Award. Her project advisor was Dr. Larry Goodson. Lieutenant Colonel Ernest R. Schmidt. Lieutenant Colonel Schmidt received the Military Order of the World Wars Writing Award. His project advisor was Professor Albert Lord. Lieutenant Colonel Brent A. Schultz. Colonel Mark E. Stackle. Colonel Elmer Bellin Sudario. Mm -hmm. Seminar 16, Colonel Christian Lee Werner. Mr. Ashraf Sami Abdelhaq. Graduating in absentia, Colonel Mohammed Al Ajhami. Lieutenant Colonel Ryan Patrick Allen. Lieutenant Colonel Joaquin Famakan Sissoko.
Lieutenant Colonel Raphael Alex Duran Marriott. Graduating in absentia, Lieutenant Colonel Jason Harris. Colonel Michael Allen Johnston. Lieutenant Colonel Charles William Keene. Lieutenant Colonel Justine Santangelo Croom. Colonel On Steve Wynn. Lieutenant Colonel Wilford Shane Tipton. Colonel Mark Robert Van Ockenberg. Graduating in absentia, Lieutenant Colonel Lucas Scott Van Antwerp. Lieutenant Colonel Timothy Lyle Woodruff. Seminar 17, Colonel Andrew J. Deaton. Lieutenant Colonel Brett A. Avazian. Ms. Alexius Butler. Colonel Adrian N. Costaru. Graduating in absentia, Colonel Randy R. Cote. Lieutenant Colonel R. Brian Deaton. Colonel Stephen A. Fairless. Colonel Fairless received the War College Foundation's Award for Outstanding Strategy Research Project. His project advisor was Dr. Richard Lackument. Graduating in absentia, Colonel Jackie K. Kainé. Lieutenant Colonel J. Brennan Cavanaugh. Colonel Juhun Kin. Colonel Heather L. Mackey. Lieutenant Colonel Stephen T. McNamara. Colonel Sebrand H. Newenhouse IV. Lieutenant Colonel Riyad Rayasin. Lieutenant Colonel Donald M. Saxon. Seminar 18, Colonel Michael R. West. Colonel Yakya al -Kurdi. Colonel Joseph Buccino. Colonel Stephen Clark. Colonel Christopher T. Fahrenbach.
Commander William Harting. Mr. Matt R. Hopkins. Colonel Brian C. LeClerc. Lieutenant Colonel Mark M. Mauser. Lieutenant Colonel Brian J. Newell, Sr. Colonel Mikola Predorodetsky. Brigadier General Ferdas Hassan Salim. Lieutenant Colonel Henry Bruce Shantz. Lieutenant Colonel John L. Shimming. Lieutenant Colonel Melissa Wardlaw. Seminar 19, graduating in absentia, Colonel Paul W. Staley. Lieutenant Colonel Vincent A. Amarina, Sr. Lieutenant Colonel Moez Bukra. Lieutenant Colonel Joshua Bradley. Lieutenant Colonel Bradley received the Association of the United States Army Writing Award. His project advisor was Dr. William Pierce. Colonel Jerry A. Brown. Colonel Taja Sukma A.K. Putra. Lieutenant Colonel Wade German. Graduating in absentia, Colonel Russell V. Hoff. Graduating in absentia, Lieutenant Colonel Robert J. Kadavi. Lieutenant Colonel Mark Schaefer. Lieutenant Colonel Schaefer received the Marine Corps Association and Foundation's General Thomas Holcomb Writing Award. His project advisor was Colonel William Storms. Colonel Jerry Zimmer. Ms. Ruth Ann Stevens Klitz. Colonel Scott J. Stoko. Lieutenant Colonel Vianessa Vargas. Lieutenant Colonel Vargas received the General Matthew B. Ridgeway Writing Award. Her project advisor was Dr. Frank Jones. Colonel Nicole Vinson. Seminar 20, Colonel Michael Anthony Zofi. Mrs. Tina Cancel. Lieutenant Colonel Nicholas Delcor. Colonel Ryan Erler. Colonel Chandela Fowl. 
Colonel Fowle received the War College Foundation's Daniel M. Lewin Cyber Terrorism Technology Writing Award. His project advisors were Colonel Eric Kotuch and Professor Howard Taylor. Colonel Daniel Horn. Colonel Anil Arachige. Colonel Ben Patrick McFall III. Colonel Yvonne Chavez Miller. Colonel Robert Daniel Payne. Colonel Brian David Schott. Lieutenant Colonel Samuel Smith, Jr. Lieutenant Colonel Uris Usakis. Lieutenant Colonel Ravindra Waugh. Graduating in absentia, Commander Henry John Wicks. Seminar 21, Colonel Thomas S. Pugsley. Colonel Ronald E. Anzalone. Lieutenant Colonel Scott R. Blanchard. Lieutenant Colonel Craig W. Butera. Colonel Woodward H. Caldwell. Colonel Tony L. Dedman, Jr. Colonel Kwaku Hagen. Lieutenant Colonel Besnick Haleli. Lieutenant Colonel Danny C. Jenny John. Lieutenant Colonel Gloria A. Moran. Lieutenant Colonel Heidi R. Monroe. Lieutenant Colonel Mohammed Bakir Razuli. Lieutenant Colonel Kyle B. Shoup. Lieutenant Colonel Jason F. Tate. Mr. William T. Unbehend. Seminar 22, Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Banks. Lieutenant Colonel Brian Fickle. Lieutenant Colonel Paul Daniel Kapinski.
Commander Jeremy Heiler. Lieutenant Colonel Eric Johnson. Lieutenant Colonel Roberto Lazo. Colonel Basil Mahasna. Colonel Ryan Morgan. Colonel Nicholas Shaper. Mr. James Staley. Chaplain Colonel Mark Stewart. Colonel Wanchenku Surinjav. Lieutenant Colonel Paul Harold Svarstad. Lieutenant Colonel Paul Thornton. Colonel Scott White. Seminar 23, Colonel Elizabeth A. Martin. Lieutenant Colonel Faisal Abukshiem. Commander Corey A. Anglesey. Lieutenant Colonel Mark E. Brow. Lieutenant Colonel Brow received the War College Foundation's Award for Outstanding Strategy Research Project. His project advisor was Professor John Langer. Graduating in absentia, Mr. Nicholas P. Haugen. Lieutenant Colonel George T. Jackson, Jr. Colonel Kokunda Keith Katungi. Colonel Marvin J. McBurrows. Colonel Larry J. McCord IV. Colonel Jarrett S. Moffitt. Lieutenant Colonel John D. Morris. Colonel Gina M. Richards McCloskey. Lieutenant Colonel Rodney D. Seba. Colonel Atamali Shabazov. Lieutenant Colonel Jack P. Vaughn, Jr. Graduating in absentia, Colonel Jason Patrick Clark. Lieutenant Colonel Khalid Al Khalifa.
Graduating in absentia, Colonel Michael Aaron Baker. Graduating in absentia, Lieutenant Colonel Joseph D. Broom. Lieutenant Colonel Johannes Harless. Graduating in absentia, Ms. Donna W. Crawford. Graduating in absentia, Lieutenant Colonel Derek R. Frank, Jr. Lieutenant Colonel Frank received the Red River Valley Fighter Pilots Association's Writing Award. His project advisor was Professor Douglas Waters. Lieutenant Colonel Timothy D. Gatlin. Colonel Travis A. Hartman. Graduating in absentia, Colonel Joseph A. Jackson. Graduating in absentia, Colonel Michael S. Johnson. Graduating in absentia, Colonel Marvin Lee King III. Colonel King received the research award from the Armed Forces Communications Electronics Association and the Command Sergeant Major William and Mrs. Rosa Barano. His project advisor was Colonel Celestino Perez. Graduating in absentia, Lieutenant Colonel Michael Thomas Loftus. Colonel William Bruce McKenna. Brigadier General Vinod Kumar Nambiar. Lieutenant Colonel Juliana Olson. Seminar 25, Colonel Stacy Dean Patterson. Lieutenant Colonel Michael J. Adams. Lieutenant Colonel Olan Ajiev. Lieutenant Colonel Mitko Baltov. Mr. Albert Paul Berry. Colonel Ken J. Brager. Graduating in absentia, Commander Tyler Hale Churchill. Lieutenant Colonel T.J. Foley. Lieutenant Colonel Joe Katz. Lieutenant Colonel Vince Myers. Lieutenant Colonel Lambert Sendegea. Lieutenant Colonel Dennis Lee Sheldon. Graduating in absentia, Colonel Tony R. Stevenson. Colonel Eric Raymond Swenson. Lieutenant Colonel Michelle M. Vergara. The following Army War College Fellows received writing awards. Colonel Edward Crute received the War College Foundation's Colonel Francis J. Kelly Special Operations Writing Award. His project advisor was Dr. Christopher Bolin. And Colonel Jason Gresh received the Foreign Area Officer Association Writing Award. His project advisor was Professor Philip Evans. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating the graduates of the United States Army War College Resident Class of 2020.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remain standing as Chaplain Sniffen delivers the benediction, followed by the singing of Old Lang Syne. We invite you to sing along using the lyrics printed in your program. Let us pray. And now may God, whose love has no limit, whose grace has no measure, whose power has no boundary, guard your hearts and your minds as you go forth, ever striving to live and serve with dignity and to always love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. <laughs>